uh, Mike Hearn said in a recent podcast uh, with Epicenter Bitcoin that the core Bitcoin code is tragically underfunded and there's there's really there's no infrastructure in place to compensate um, the coders who actually put in all you know these their time their energy their work into actually improving the core code which you know according to Mike Hearn quote it's ground to a halt uh, the work on the core code is ground to a halt and during a time like this when we have you know theoretical 51% attacks uh, from mining pools that gain you know too much mining power uh, and th as the community debates you know possible solutions to that uh, involving changes to the code like who's actually gonna do those changes you know we need we need people who who will actually work on the code itself like Mike Hearn said that the Bitcoin Foundation, which is supposed to be this lobbying group who's super, you know, into spreading Bitcoin adoption and, and everything, they actually only pay three people to work on the Bitcoin core code. And one of those people is Gavin Andreessen, who's the chief scientist. And then two of the others, Mike Hearn said in the podcast that uh, they don't even really want to work on the code anymore because it's gotten too political. Uh, arguments break out between the programmers about what uh, what changes should be made and the arguments have gotten more heated in the past year um, partially because of, of this like this um, toxic uh, um, like opinions circulating in the community about what needs to be done and, and flame wars happening and and it, it's it's kind of a bad situation uh, at, at, in concerning the Bitcoin um, core code. So, yeah, uh, what, what do you what do you think? I think it's definitely a problem, especially with uh, the mining centralization thing going on, um, because you know while I think having decentralized mining pools is a pretty is a pretty solid solution, mm -hmm. the only way to you know to permanently make it impossible to have a 51% attack um, is to fix it in the core code. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying that's what we need to happen. Like, we, we need to, you know, a lot of people are saying uh, the developers need to combine proof of work with proof of stake somehow mm, to make it impossible to for a 51% attack to happen. And then we need to have a hard fork and, you know, you create a new blockchain and, and uh, and you know we'll pick that the the market will pick the better blockchain of course, mm -hmm. um, but that can't happen if there's no incentive to to do the coding because it you know Bitcoin Bitcoin Core it's not just some fun weekend project anymore. Yeah. Um. Anybody who takes on changing it is basically taking on a full time job. Uh. So they. You're gonna have. They're gonna have to devote all their time to it, and so they need to be paid because they're they're giving Absolutely. us a very valuable service, and at the same time, they have to make a living. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like Mike Hearn's solution. He he wants. Uh, he he had this idea for crowdsourcing the funds for the Bitcoin development. Yes. And he said that the the decentralized crowdsourcing uh, platform, what is it called? Light Is it called Lighthouse? Lighthouse, yes. Yeah, Lighthouse. Um, he said that that could be a good starting point to, you know, to kick off the, the crowdsourced funding campaign. And yeah. I think that's a really good idea because, um, because then uh, that makes it less political. Like you said, core development has become very political. That makes it less political and more market oriented because uh, whoever has the best idea, the people are going to give that developer or group of developers their money. Yep. Um, yeah, then it's pretty straightforward. You just do whatever the market tells you to do. Yeah. So I think that's a really great idea that Mike Hearn had. He also said, here's a quote from from the um, the quote from the podcast. He said that. Um, in addition to his idea for uh, crowdsourcing uh, the funding for Bitcoin Core, he said that uh, 
the companies have the funding, they've got their profits, they've got their venture venture capital. They need Bitcoin to work well, so my plan is to mostly get these companies to pledge. Mm. So he wants to recruit, you know, the big companies. Uh, he mentioned specifically BitPay and Coinbase. He wants them to pledge money to help uh, core development because it's in their self-interest. I think that's a good idea too. Um, yeah. Whether or not he'll be successful, you know, only time will tell. But I think, I think um, it's very important that he's successful because the core development is a very important thing to Bitcoin. Yeah, it's hugely important. I mean, this it's 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 the actual code of of this decentralized network that we all use and love. And I kind of wonder, like, why wasn't a system like this put in place much earlier? Like, this is the kind of thing that I thought or kind of hoped, assumed, whatever, that the Bitcoin Foundation would kind of implement on its own a long time ago. Uh, a, a way to um, fund programmers and coders who actually improve the protocol, which is uh, one of the main appeals for, for, uh, of Bitcoin, to me at least, is that you can, you can modify the code to make it better, improve on it, um, prevent attacks and such. But there's like we're barely getting around to this now of finding a way to fund and compensate people for their hard work on improving this public good. And that's exactly how Mike Hearn described it, is it's a public good that a lot of people benefit from, but no one necessarily wants to uh, sacrifice their own money to uh, improve it. And Lighthouse is his attempt to rectify that. And you know what? I, I, I love what Mike Hearn is doing. I think um, he's identifying problems in the ecosystem that people like me, you know, thought that someone else would take care of a long time ago. But, uh, uh, you know, Mike Hearn, he's, he's getting around to it and, um, and actually improving things and making the system better. Yeah, you know, I, I really, I think that's what the Bitcoin Foundation set out to do, you know, when it was first established. Yeah. Was to raise was to raise Bitcoin awareness and to improve the technology, um, but you know then they got tied up in lobbying governments and you know hanging out with bureaucrats and stuff, and, and becoming um, bureaucrats themselves in a lot of yeah, ways. Yeah, I mean, you hang out with governments, you're gonna start acting like a government. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, they've Bitcoin Foundation has just become really bureaucratic, uh, really secretive. Um, mm -hmm. Like I read, like I read somewhere that they had, you know, they had a Bitcoin Foundation uh, sponsored convention, and um, you know they're they're very secretive with that. You know, they didn't let a lot of press in, um, and they had a bunch of secret meetings that weren't open to the people at the convention and things like that. Oh man! So Don't. we, uh, what are they doing? My opinion is that we definitely need to have an alternative to the Bitcoin Foundation. Um, really preferably a decentralized, non-bureaucratic thing like Lighthouse uh, that will help yeah. raise funding for the core development. Um, because really, politics and government is just not that important. You know, if you, can make, if you can make Bitcoin work and if you can make it valuable, people are going to use it whether it's illegal or not. Yeah. You know, yeah. like when it, like that happened when it, you know, when it first started. Like, um, no, but like hardly anybody knew about it. And, um, and if the, and if any governments found out about it and they found out it was mainly being used on Silk Road to trade drugs, they probably would have banned it immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, and the people on Silk Road knew that but they didn't care. They still used Bitcoin because they believed in it. Yeah. And it provided a useful, uh, service for them. So, I mean, that's the important thing. Um, you know, trying to get the, the government on our side and things like that. It just, it just uh, detracts from you know the progression of Bitcoin acceptance because um, we're never going to convince the government because the whole, the whole the you know the founding principle of Bitcoin was to render central banking and and um, and fiat money and government government monopolization of the money supply and issuance of money. Bitcoin is supposed to render all that irrelevant. Mm. So, B Bitcoin goes it it directly contradicts the interests of the government. So there's no reason 
trying to get the government on our side because it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, we just need to focus on making Bitcoin work, and that's what we need to do, in my opinion. You think it's kind of like a waste of time, unnecessary? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, even, you know, with the story about, you know, Canada's, you know, new amendment to regulate it, um, even if they are sympathetic to Bitcoin and they want to, you know, legitimize it, the regulations they place are going to have a, a negative impact anyways because it's going to do things like restrict competition and, you know, make it, it's going to turn it, it's going to turn the Bitcoin economy into the mainstream economy and we see how well that's doing now, right? Yeah. Um, so I just don't think government is really important in terms of making Bitcoin work because Bitcoin is right. designed to yeah. work without a government. 